Y'all may be seated. Happy New Year! Ah, good. You guys had the best one, actually, out of all the services today. So I'm glad that you all picked up on the message real good. Thank you so much. I, it is a wonderful time. It's Advent. It's the new year of the church year. And oh my gosh, I am so excited about this year. I'm so excited about all the good things that God is doing, all the good things that he will do. We are in the greatest time ever to be the church, in my personal opinion. It's a great time to be a Christian. It's a great time to expect great things from our Lord. Indeed it is. But as you know, with New Year's, there comes, uh, what, what is it, New Year's resolutions? So what are some of the things that y'all expected to do whenever a New Year starts? What do you expect to do usually? Lose weight. There you go. Uh, that's, a, that's a basic one, but we're all good with that one. What's other things that you can expect to do when you make a New Year resolution? Or what's some New Year's things that you expect to happen? Organize. Ah, the ever growing thing. Yes, in the back. Play. Yes, you can expect to play still a lot in the new year. Always a good thing to do that. What else can you expect to do? Eat. Always. Always good food to eat, too. What other things? Exercise. More exercising. Yes. If you got to eat, you got to exercise. Always good. You got to expect to do. Looks for your tax documents. <laughs> oh, do you have to remind us of that? It's a new year. Oh, uh, what's the old saying? There's only two things ever assured in this world, death and taxes. Yep, there you go. You can always expect things to happen in the new year. You can always expect things to stay the same or things to change. There's always going to be one of those two. But we start the church year, you know, a month early, in Advent, in December. And as I said, what do you expect to change? What do you expect God to do? And also, have you ever kind of realized that we begin our church year very oddly? Because we don't begin with, let's say, Genesis. We don't begin with going back to the beginning of a gospel. And usually what churches do is they cycle through different gospel texts throughout the year for three years. We have one for Matthew. We're in Mark now. The year after this, next year in 2025, we'll go to Luke again and then go back to Matthew. But where do we begin in the new year? What's the very first reading for the very first Sunday of the new church year? What's the gospel? Palm Sunday. Have you ever kind of realized how weird that is? We begin a new church year by reading from the Gospels the first day of the last week of Jesus' life on earth. Now why is that? What can you expect? Why is that odd? Well, maybe if we d dive into this together, we might understand why. Because we have to understand that Jesus came specifically for that week. He came to do something completely expected and unexpected. But you go through this and we have the whole getting ready for this Advent season, the coming of our King. And Palm Sunday has this great thing, coming of the King. We have a great symbol. We have a great knowledge, a donkey instead of a war horse for our God being so humble. They throw cloaks on the ground, palm branches, and all shout, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna to even our King, David, for he comes. And Hosanna to God in the highest. And even Jesus does everything that you would expect Jesus to do. Going back to Zechariah 9.9, another prophecy he is purposefully fulfilling. See, O Jerusalem, shout aloud, O daughter of Zion. See your king, righteous and coming to you, humble and riding on a donkey. And our Lord 
goes and finds the colt of a donkey. Exactly how Zechariah says. And he goes and he does everything with purpose to fulfill the expected result of saving God's people. And of course, all the people are there too. All of the people are gathered around in Jerusalem. His disciples are laying cloaks on the ground. The crowds following him from all across the area of Bethany, of Bethpage, of all the places, all go to see Jesus. And they see him riding in, and they're all excited because they all have great expectations of what our Savior is going to do. They have great expectations because they are wanting Jesus to go march up to the Roman palace, to Pilate's home, and kick him out of his home. They want to see Pilate kicked to the curb, ousted. They want the Romans gone from their place. They want the temple to be filled with all sorts of people. They want to see the coffers overflowing with gold and riches. They want to see Israel becoming a great nation again, a cultural significance in the area, no longer playing backseat to a Roman culture, a Roman way of life, and a Roman way of doing things. Back to being God's people, for God's nation, for the world to see what he is doing. And they follow Jesus, expecting great things. They follow him to the temple. And that's where the gospel would have us end here today. But I think it's important for you all to know what happens next. Because it is a happy new year. And Jesus goes into the see the temple that very same Palm Sunday. He looks around and he does nothing. He just looks. And then goes away. Okay. Well, maybe tomorrow on Monday he'll do something. So he goes, and as he's going to Jerusalem, he sees a fig tree. And he curses it, because it doesn't have any figs, even though it's not the season for figs. That's a little mean, Jesus. So he goes, and he walks in. And he sees the prayer area of the temple. This area that all people are supposed to be able to pray to God to. Didn't matter if you were a woman, didn't matter if you were a Gentile believer, didn't matter if you were a Jewish believer. It was a place where all could be gathered around and prayed to God for anything, specifically made for all people. And in that place that was made for prayer for all people, they were selling goats, chickens, pigeons, sheep, and exchanging money. And our Lord goes up to his father's house, takes a whip and a scourge, and drives everyone out of his house, kicks them all to the curb, and says, you have made my house of prayer, and my father's house of prayer, into a den of thieves. Then they pass by the next day, and that tree that he cursed is all withered, shriveled up, and broken to pieces. And so he goes into the next day and he preaches, woe to Jerusalem, the city that kills prophets. You see this temple around here? There is not going to be one stone left unturned that will not be trampled underfoot. Jesus hit the unexpected for sure. And those crowds that were shouting, Hosanna, blessed be the one, our King David, hoping for some great and powerful change to happen. When presented with the Christ. Well, it wasn't what they were expecting. And those shouts of Hosanna became shouts of crucify. Happy New Year. It's new time. What can we expect him to do? What do you expect God to do for you in a new year? What do you expect him? And put your expectations on him. Are they good and faithful? Are they abounding in what the Lord has? Are they producing the fruits of repentance, of joy and life and salvation? 
or are your expectations on worldly things, on worldly gain, on things that are measured in worldly things and not heavenly joys? What are you expecting? What are you expecting God to do in the new year? I can tell you one thing that we can expect is the unexpected. Because God works in very unexpected ways. Think of it for a moment with me. How expected would it be that God would rescue his people Israel by literally going to a huge body of water, parting it on two sides, so somehow there's dry land right down the middle and everyone could walk through? Did you ever expect that to happen? What about... If you were going against God's enemies like Joshua was, and you prayed to God, God, I'm going after my enemies, your enemies, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, hold the sun still in the sky so that I might conquer them. And you know what God did? The sun actually stood still in the very sky and did not move. Could you ever expect that? What about if you were thrown into a lion's den where lions were starved for days and days, man-eaters all, <coughs> and you got out scot-free? <coughs> Could you ever expect that? Or would you ever expect that the God of heavens who created everything around, who is above all, in all, and continues to sustain all, would humble himself to be born of a virgin? to become in flesh and take on joy and sorrow, pain and anguish, love and sadness, all of it wrapped up into a human flesh and being experiencing all of our mortal woes and even doing the most unexpected thing, defeating sin, death, and the power of the devil by dying on a cross, <coughs> from rising from the grave and ascending into heaven to kick Satan out of the heavenly courts so that no longer is there accusations in God's ear, but only reconciliation and forgiveness. And the advocate, our Savior Jesus, saying to God that you are all saved redeemed and precious people, forgiven of all of your sins. Could you ever expect that? I don't think so. Because that is who our God is. He calls into faithful repentance all who believe in him. He will destroy every vine, every tree that does not produce good fruit in our lives prune us and make us better and go into our lives and make these things good. He will come and he will bring good fruit out from us, not our own but his, to share with the world around us. And he does this in the most unexpected ways. Pray for those things. Each time that you go out into the world, pray to God, show me what you wish me to do. Use me in the ways, though they might be unexpected. Go out into the world. Proclaim a new year of the Lord's favor. Because his work is going to be done. Irregardless of what you or I will do. But we get to join in that wonderful mission. We get to join him in unexpected ways that will bring glory and light and joy to the world. For our Savior has come. He has fulfilled all things, even to the smallest of details, so that you and I may find life and joy in our King. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Let's have a good one in the unexpected mercies and grace of our Lord and Savior. Amen. <coughs> let's go to our Lord before our, our messages, and let's go to him in the words of our Nicene Creed. Let's confess our faith in him.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. I acknowledge one Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it's a great time to be in God's house, a great time to be his church. We've got lots of things that are happening in December because, as you know, nothing ever busy happens in December in a church. Absolutely nothing. But we have plenty that is going on here. Steve, do you want to talk about some of the more um, things coming up in the next coming days? because we'll have an Advent and a carol uh, sing-along, if you will, during that service. So it's a great opportunity. Um, two more things. One, this uh, next Saturday, the 9th, is our combined choir with St. Mark's from St. Charles for our Christmas cantata. Five o'clock here. It's a great way to invite a family member or a friend or a neighbor with you to come to that uh, special community service, if you will, and hear some great classics. And then one last thing. As of last night, we only had about 20 poinsettias ordered to beautify our sanctuary. So on your way out, check out the little sign-up sheet. Next weekend is the deadline to get your poinsettia order in. And let's fill this place and beautify it for Christmas. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Steve. All the other days, we've got a lot more. There are school Christmas programs. There are band concerts. There are many ways into worship with us, especially on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. All of those things are found on our website, um, on our homepage. So please, if you're looking for information about dates and times, go to our website. It's all right there in the front. Our calendar is right there for you all to see and being able to keep up and to be able to join us in the many wonderful festivities we have in the Advent season here at St. Paul. We also started up our new members class in our youth room and over there at 9.30. They'll be continuing on for next week and the following week, the 17th. Um, and then we'll be taking a break for Christmas and finishing up in January. And then we also have in the Narthex area, it's going on for one more week, a special Bible study led by Dan Schmidt about the true Christmas story. Because if you think that, you know, that nativity sets we all have with the nice manger scene with the shepherds and the angels and all of that stuff all happening on one blessed night. Yeah, that probably didn't happen like that. In fact, it actually, the real historical stuff, it's fascinating to know. It does not change the story of Christmas, but instead makes it more miraculous because of the how normal it was, but yet how unexpected it was as well. So join Dan for another week. Start on 9.30 in the narthex and join us as we go and dive into the Christmas story. I think that was, brothers and sisters in Christ, you're going to go out into the world this week. 
You're going to go out, and God is going to use you in the most blessed ways possible. Whether that be a simple prayer that's going to uplift a person in need. Whether it's going to be you making your child's day. Or maybe children make your parents' day and listen to them. That'd be nice too. But all things, God is going to be with you. He is going to surround you with his love. And he is going to guide you in the ways that will bring him glory and praise around the world. That's a wonderful thing. We get to live in the hope of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, may you go in the love and peace of our Lord. May he bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you all his peace. And stand as we all sing our song. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.